r slash credit with Mr. Greet story. I can't breathe. Black lives matter. As the gap of the political divide in our world grows deeper, we would like to take a few minutes of your time or express our support of equal treatment, equal justice, to express solidarity with groups which have been marginalized for too long, and to outright say black lives matter. The Ask Reddit moderators have decided to disable posting for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, the time George Floyd was held down by police, and we will lock comments on front page posts. Our hope is that people reading this will take a moment to pause and reflect on what can be done to improve the world. This will take place at 8pm CDT. Ask Reddit is a discussion forum with which we want to encourage discussion of a wide range of topics. Now, more than ever, it's important to talk about the topics that divide us, and use our credit to approach these conversations with open minds and respectful discussion. This is also an important opportunity to reiterate our stance on moderation. Simply put, we believe it's our duty to ensure neutral and fair moderation, so people with opposing views can use our platform as a place to have these important and much needed discussions about their views, our hope being that the world will benefit as a result. We feel that it is a duty to make sure the task credit is welcoming to all. To that end, we have a set of rules to ensure posts encourage discussion and to ensure users feel safe, welcome, and respected. As always, blatant statements of racism or any other kind of bigotry will not be tolerated. We want users to be able to express themselves and their views. Remember that everyone here and everyone you see in the news are human beings too. With all of that in mind, we reiterate our encouragement for people to discuss these hard and often uncomfortable topics as a way to find alignment, unity, and to progress as a society. We ask that you take a few minutes to research a charity that aligns with your beliefs or a cause you care about, and that you donate to it if you're able. Rolling Stone put together a lot of links to different funds across many states, if you would like to use this as a place to start. The Ask Reddit Mods. Regardless of your stance, political or otherwise, I think we can all agree that something needs to change within the laws. Police should face the exact same punishments and liabilities as every normal citizen should. Absolutely. I think this is the major point that needs to be highlighted. The police are citizens, not gods. They need to obey the exact same laws as everyone else. I'm talking from cell phone use, while driving and speeding to assault and murder. Cops are US citizens, and need to be held to US law just like every other citizen. I think it's less the laws and more the fact that they aren't being informed. What was done to George Floyd and many others was clearly illegal, but the law was simply not enforced. The real problem is that police are practically immune to the law due to it not being enforced on them. I'm not American, but I can see this cycle happening again and again. Something happens, people get angry, riot promises made, things settle down, nothing happens until something happens, and it starts all over again. It seems to have been happening decade after decade. I'm curious about what solid reforms and changes that need to start the day after protests slash riots stop from the view of minorities. What are those things that you've been waiting for decades? One of the big proposed changes I saw was to make it so every cop has to have liability insurance, the same way doctors have malpractice insurance. That means that a. If someone sues a cop for committing brutality, taxpayers don't have to pay for it. B. If a cop does get caught and sued for it, his insurance rates will go up, making it more expensive for him to keep being a cop. This would be a deterrence for him slash his department. Obviously this is far from the only thing that could slash should be done, but I thought that was a great and simple to understand the proposal that would make a real difference. I saw a live stream from Charleston, where they were organizing and getting ready to march. The police were right next to the protesters and the two parties were talking and working with each other about what needs to be done, so that everyone involved can go home safely after. It was very civil and honestly uplifting to see black protesters working with white police officers in this political climate, and in a way that makes sure no one gets hurt, innocent people don't lose homes or business. Another protester got up 
and said that he talked to the neighborhood association asking permission to use certain streets and how they need to be respectful of the property because destroying it isn't going to help anyone. But then, some stupid little white kid got up, and I quote, they want us to be peaceful, we need to fuck everything up, to get our point across. He was met with booze and blank stares. The whole stream was a great example on how the peaceful people in the crowd protesting are the ones who want real change and the rioters don't care about the cause. They just want to watch this country burn. Literally and metaphorically. I went to the protest in my city tonight. Last night, protesters in a nearby city were repeatedly tear gassed over minor vandalism, graffiti, and such. I'm not a big civic pride person. But I was proud of my city tonight. The protest was peaceful, even with a couple of thousand people there, it's not a big city. The police actually joined in instead of attacking anyone. The cops knelt with us for 8 minutes. The chief of police gave a short speech about how they were there in solidarity and want to keep an open dialogue with the people of the community. When I thanked a group of officers for not letting our community become part of the problem, one of them told me, we are pissed off about this too. It was a nice reminder that, even though our country seems pretty fucked right now, there are good people on each side, legitimately fighting for change. We need an end goal. It's not enough to say we want change. We need specific demands. That until met the protests won't stop. I just don't know how we come up with that. This. We are demanding abstract concepts so far. Equality. Justice. Etc. We need to show up with concrete actionable demands. I want to start by saying that, when I say black lives matter there is an implied to at the end. I'm not saying my life matters more, or your life matters less. Just that mine is equally important, and not viewed as such by, unfortunately, many people. All lives matter is disrespectful, because it negates the purposeful attention we are trying to draw to black injustice specifically. I need you to please understand that racism is not the racism they taught us in school anymore. Modern racism is giving black people higher interest rates or bad loans, which a bank was sued millions for doing in 2017. Its relatives purposely not showing black people houses in nicer areas. Its companies only hiring 1 to 5 black people for their quota, and not for their merit, which is ironically racist towards whites who potentially deserved it more spurring more division. It's colleges only accepting black people to make themselves look good on paper instead of actually valuing that student's strengths and potential. It's enforcing laws in schools that don't allow black people to wear their natural hair because it is unprofessional and a distraction to other students. It's Macute companies only having one two three dark foundation shades because we are a demographic without money and thus not worth pursuing and then suddenly coming out with more shades once they see how successful Rahana was when she acknowledged us. It's crooked police purposely going into low income areas, scanning license plates, and purposely ticketing people they know cannot afford it, so that they will go to jail for outstanding tickets, and become a part of the for-profit prison pipeline. It's fashion companies and movers using damaging stereotypes of black people instead of showing how diverse and beautiful our people are, thus instilling an untrue idea of what black people are to others across the world. Imagine you're from a place with no black people. If all the movies and shows portray us a certain way, you'll assume that must be true. When I first started at my old place of employment, a very nice tech company, I had a black janitor stop me one morning as I was heading up to the office. Tears in his eyes. He gripped my shoulder, his hands frail, wrinkled and told me how proud of me he was. How happy he was that a little black girl was working at one of the tech companies. I hugged him and told him thank you. When I tell you I ran to the bathroom and bawled my eyes out. I was so grateful, but that is a heavy burden to carry not only was I working for me, I was working for him, for all my ancestors who didn't have a chance. And when I was let go two months ago, it hit hard, because it felt like not only did I fail me, I failed them. I realized it was not my fault, a virus hit the country, and I was a part of a mass layoff. But do you see how race played into my emotional state, something most others wouldn't have to deal with? So please, when you see black lives matter, when you see a protest, know that all we're asking for is change. Yes, we have civil rights, but why are you scoffing at us asking for more? Why are we expected to accept the bare minimum? 
as a kid. Mind you I was born in 1996. I was given the talk that my skin means I have to conduct myself a certain way in certain environments for my own safety. That people will fear me for simply having too much melanin. That I will be black first, your lovely second until I die. I'm trying my hardest to create a future where I don't have to give my kids that same speech. Where I don't have to pass down that generational trauma. If you have questions about the protesting, the movement, modern racism ask me please. I know it can be a heated topic and the only way to change that is to have an open dialogue and educate. This is me offering the olive branch, me saying I'm hurting and still have nothing but love in my heart. Too often we are too busy trying to share our thoughts that we don't hear others. Edit. I've gotten a lovely amount of responses I'm in Boston and it's currently 12.13am. I'm trying to get a semi-regular sleep schedule on track, so I'll probably be heading to bed soon. Please know if I don't get back to you tonight I will tomorrow. All love and hugs from me. Thank you for making a girl feel heard. I saw a great comparison yesterday here on Reddit. When someone says save the rainforests, they are not saying fuck all the other kinds of forests, and that's obvious. The implied to in Black Lives Matter is obvious in the same way. My favorite one was it's like someone saying all houses matter. My house matters too. While the house down the street is burning down. I saw an Ali 5 a few years ago that stuck with me. Imagine that you're sitting down to dinner with your family and while everyone else gets a serving of the meal, you don't get any. So you say I should get my fair share. And as a direct response to this, your dad corrects you, saying, everyone should get their fair share. Now, that's a wonderful sentiment, indeed, everyone should, and that was kinda your point in the first place, that you should be a part of everyone, and you should get your fair share also. However, dad's smart ass comment just dismissed you, and didn't solve the problem, that you still haven't got many. The problem is, that the statement I should get my fair share, had an implicit to at the end, I should get my fair share too, just like everyone else. But your dad's response treated your statement, as though you meant only I should get my fair share, which clearly was not your intention. As a result, his statement that everyone should get their fair share, while true, only served to ignore the problem you were trying to point out. That's the situation of the Black Lives Matter movement. Culture, laws, the arts, religion, and everyone else repeatedly suggest that our lives should matter. Clearly, that message already abounds in our society. The problem is that, in practice, the world doesn't work the way. You see the film Nightcrawler. You know the part where Annie Russo tells Jake Gyllenhaal that she doesn't want footage of a black or Latino person dying. She wants news stories about affluent white people being killed. That's not made up out of whole cloth. There is a news bias toward stories that the majority of the audience, who are white, can identify with. So when a young black man gets killed, prior to the recent police shootings, it's generally not considered news, while a middle-aged white woman being killed is treated as news. And to a large degree, that is accurate young black men are killed in significantly disproportionate numbers, which is why we don't treat it as anything new. But the result is that, societally, we don't pay as much attention to certain people's deaths as we do to others. So, currently, we don't treat all lives as though they matter equally. Just like asking dad for your fair share, the phrase black lives matter also has an implicit to at the end. It's saying that black lives should also matter. But responding to this by saying all lives matter is willfully going back to ignoring the problem. It's a way of dismissing the statement by falsely suggesting that it means only black lives matter when that is obviously not the case. And so saying all lives matter as a direct response to black lives matter is essentially saying that we should just go back to ignoring the problem. TL. Doctor. The phrase black lives matter carries an implicit to at the end. It's saying that black lives should also matter. Saying all lives matter is dismissing the very problems that the phrase is trying to draw attention to. Link to original and credit to slash you slash cheeky seat. Thank you for watching. Tell me which one was your favorite. Like subscribe and hit that notification bell for more. The next video will be even more interesting. You are a legend.